Treating an alkyl halide with base creates an alkene. This is a 1-2 elimination reaction. Hydrogen and halide are removed from adjacent carbons to make the pi bond. We can easily follow this by arrow pushing. In the standard way, a pair of electrons from the base bonds with a proton. This sigma bond pair of electrons makes a pi bond, and this sigma bond pair of electrons leaves with the halide. When we look at the transition state for this concerted one-step reaction, it's clear that several of the atoms are in the same plane. The base, the proton, these two carbons, and the halide all are in the same plane, the plane of the screen. Because the proton and the halide need to assume the anti-arrangement, as I've shown here, there's a very fixed arrangement for the other atoms or groups that are attached to the two carbons. Here, 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 and here. The atoms or groups attached to carbon that are sticking toward us are sticking toward us in the alkene. The ones sticking back are sticking back in the alkene. This can result in making E, Z, alkene stereoisomers, but not always. Take a look at this. When two of the same thing are attached to this carbon, let's say they're both A, we can have different things here and not have stereoisomers because we have A back and A forward. So it doesn't matter whether B is back or forward, D is back or forward. The fact is that these atoms will always be looking across at an A. So there is no E, Z stereochemistry associated with this pi bond. The same is true if these are both A. Make these whatever. They can be different. If these are both A, we have no E, Z stereoisomers. D and B are looking across at A, whether they're back or forward. But take a look at the case when both of these carbons involved in elimination are stereogenic centers. Each of these carbons has four different things attached to it, so it's a stereogenic center. There's only one stereoisomer represented by this structure. And to have elimination occur, the hydrogen and the halide must be in the same plane in the anti arrangement as I've drawn it here. This means that B, which is sticking out toward us, and D, which is sticking out toward us, will be facing each other in the product. And A and E, which are back, will both be back in the product. So now we have either E or Z stereoisomers. It does not form both stereoisomers. Now whether it's E or Z simply depends on what A, B, E, and D are, and it doesn't matter for our discussion. The point is that we have one stereoisomer as a reactant, and it makes one stereoisomer for the product. This is a stereospecific reaction. The stereochemistry of the reactant dictates the stereochemistry of the product. But there are examples of the E2 reaction that are not stereospecific. Take a look at this. This reactant has one stereogenic center, the one that has the halide attached to it. The other center has two hydrogens. It's not a stereogenic center, but it's not a stereogenic center because it has two hydrogens. Either one of these hydrogens can be lost in the elimination reaction. In the specific reaction I show here, it's the hydrogen ion highlighted in blue that is lost, and the tan hydrogen is retained. This results in very specific stereochemistry. A and B are across from each other. A and B start out pointing out toward us, and in the product they're pointing toward us. The tan H and D start out pointing back away from us, and they're pointing back away from us. So when we lose the blue hydrogen, we only make one stereoisomer. But what about when we lose the tan hydrogen? To lose the tan hydrogen in this elimination, it must rotate up here to assume the anti-complainer position. That means this blue hydrogen rotates down this way, and A rotates over there. That leads to this arrangement in the reactant and this stereochemistry in the product. The stereochemistry is different. This single reactant makes two stereoisomers. Whether this is E or C is determined by what A, B, and D are, but it's only one. And whichever one this is, this is the other one. So I'm going to write Z or E. And I have a question for you. Which of these two stereoisomers is favored? The answer, the more stable one. The factors that make one alkene more stable than the other 
will also affect the stability of the transition states leading to these stereoisomers. So the more stable alkene will have a more stable transition state, lower activation energy, and will be formed faster. So there are one, two elimination cases where the product has no stereochemistry. There are other cases where there are two stereogenic centers and the reaction is stereospecific. And then there's this case where there's only one stereogenic center. There are two alpha hydrogens and the reaction is stereoselective. Stereoselective means that there's more of one alkene form compared to the other. Now I want to show you one more thing, in part because it's interesting, but mostly because you should take a look at this. This pops up on a lot of exams because it combines two things. It combines what you know about the conformations of cyclohexanes with what you know about the stereochemistry of E2 elimination reactions. Look at this. When the cis cyclohexyl halide undergoes elimination, it forms the more stable, tri-substituted alkene. This is expected. The reaction follows Zaseff's rule, which says that the more highly substituted alkene is formed. We know what that really means is the more stable alkene is preferentially formed. The less substituted alkene would be formed if we lose the hydrogen from this carbon. So take a look at this reaction. That's exactly what happens when this trans isomer is treated with base. The less stable alkene is formed. This position selectivity is a function of the stereochemistry of the reactants. The cis stereoisomer makes the expected more stable alkene. But the trans stereoisomer doesn't. It makes the less stable alkene. To explain that, we need to look at the chair conformation of these two structures. To write the chair form of the structure up above, I've written the halide in an axial position and the hydrogen that will be lost in an adjacent axial position. The halide is sticking straight up and the hydrogen is sticking straight down. This is the anti coplanar arrangement that we know is necessary. This bond, this bond, and this bond are all in the same plane. So the stereochemistry of this structure permits the anti coplanar arrangement to form the more stable alkene. But that's not the case when we have the other stereoisomer. In this other chair, where we need to have the hydrogen, we have the methyl group instead. The methyl is anti-coplanar to the halide. This 1-2 elimination reaction to make the more stable alkene cannot take place. However, there is an anti-coplanar arrangement between the halide and this hydrogen on its other side. So loss of this alpha hydrogen together with the halide makes the alkene I've shown here. The reaction is highly regioselective because of the stereochemistry of the reactant.